Okay, earlier this week, when I was trying to decide what video to post, I thought I'd do one on Brand Promise. I'd recently talked about the Brand Essence and the Brand Essence and the Brand Promise. They're the two uh, kind of key pieces, is the two main sentences of a brand message strategy. So I started to look at it. I was you know, looking at the basic format of the Brand Promise. When you blank, you will blank. And that first sentence is the desired reaction. So the more I thought about it, the more I realized I need to talk about the desired reaction first, and we can do a video on brand promise in a week or two. So let me back up even further than earlier this week to many years ago, back in the stone ages, when I was early in my career, I worked at an ad agency and I thought the goal of any ad was just two parts. One, get people's attention to make them remember you. Um, and as I got smarter, notice I didn't say smart, I'm still working on that, but I am getting smarter every day. Um, I realized an ad needs to do something else. Um, we need to ask, what do we really need the audience members to do? What are we inspiring them to do? Uh, what is the desired reaction, in other words? Every organization wants or needs somebody to do something. Every campaign exists to inspire members of the target audience to do something. That something is the desired reaction. Oftentimes, that desired reaction is quite simply buy our stuff. But it's also walk into our store, visit our website, go to a museum, register to vote, donate to a cause, donate even more to a cause, um, be more receptive to the email or phone call from a salesperson, uh, think that we're super smart, um, keep us in mind for whenever it is you finally do need what it is that we sell. As you can see, oftentimes these different types of desired reactions match the uh, audience member's path through its customer journey. Uh, maybe it's first visit a website, then it's visit our store, then it's engage with a salesperson, then it's buy our product. Or whatever the sales journey is, the customer journey is for your audience members, you have to make sure you're at the right place along that line. Um, and sometimes there's multiple desired reactions within a single tactic. Take an email campaign, for example, or a single email, sales email of some sort. Um, ultimately, you want them to buy now, but maybe they're not ready, so we want them to make an appointment. Or maybe they're not ready, so we want them to visit our website or sign up for a newsletter or follow us on social media. Um, and, you know, so these calls to action are really just those different desired reactions. Those two things, uh, you know, pretty similar. Your call to action and your desired reaction. Um, but you have to make sure you know where they are along that customer journey because like a buddy of mine used to compare everything to dating. Every marketing tactic or sales tactic, he compared it to dating. And, and what we are all guilty of from time to time in our marketing is skipping some logical steps. We're trying to get somebody to a point where they aren't yet. We're uh, asking them to sign up for a three-day seminar and they don't even know if they like what it is we talk about. And, and so it's kind of like, if you're comparing it to dating, it's kind of like asking if they want to meet our parents instead of asking for a second date. Um, it also, it's not just important to make sure you're not jumping the gun a little bit. It's just it's important to make sure everybody knows what the agreed upon desired reaction is. Um, that way we can be confident that we're not overreaching, but we also know that we can measure the success of that tactic. We can know if it worked or not. But let me go back uh, a couple seconds or a couple of minutes and talk about the fact that oftentimes the desired reaction is buy our stuff. But not every tactic is focused on that. And it might be because it's earlier in the, the journey or it might be like it's thought leadership. We're just trying to stay in front of them. We're trying to position ourselves as smart. We're trying to make ourselves the experts that they will turn to when they need to turn to us. But yeah, but in that case, that's still the ultimate goal of most thought leadership is eventually to get them to buy our product or to buy our service. Um, but not everyone is trying to sell a, a product or a service. Maybe they're uh, inspiring people to vote a certain way or start exercising or eating better or inspiring them to donate to a campaign or stop polluting or join an organization or volunteer or support a cause, whatever it is. But it's important to remember that while those desired reactions are not asking people to buy something, they are asking them to buy into something. Uh, you're not selling a product or service, you're selling an idea. And when you're selling an idea, you're still selling. 
your target audience members hear messages from social service organizations with the same ears that they hear messages selling toothpaste. They see marketing materials for charities with the same eyes as they see social posts for beer or wine. Um, potential donors uh, thought process, the mental weighing of pros and cons that they do when choosing uh, what nonprofit to support, it's the same thought process as they go through when they're choosing what car to buy. So no matter what your desired reaction is, if you're paying close attention to your audience members needs and wants, you're identifying your shared passions and, and leveraging those, and you're maintaining your focus on the specific desired reaction of each tactic along the way, almost any reaction can be created. Thanks.